31, I'm going to take a look at examples 6 and 7 together because they're basically asking, or I'm asking you to graph the same function just in two different ways. So when I go through example 6 and then example 7, keep in mind you can use either of these methods to graph a line. Find the one that works best for you. But this is asking you to graph this linear function by plotting points. So I can see mx plus b here, slope is negative 3 fourths, and then the y-intercept is 0, 6. And I'm being asked to plot this using points. So this is just a tried and true method that, if, and this works for any function, any type of function, linear or, or when we move beyond linear. If you're not sure what this shape of this graph would look like, let's say you don't recognize this as a line, then make a little t-table, put some x's and y's together, and you should always pick the x values. You would pick the independent values and then see what the dependent values are based on that, and then plot those points. Now, I've mentioned before, my, my favorite five x values to pick are these. I usually pick negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, and then I plug them into the function and see what pops back out. But we can be efficient here, and we can look at the type of function I have and see that whatever I plug in for x, it's going to get multiplied by negative three-fourths. And if I plug negative two and negative one and one and two in there, I'm gonna have fractions. And if we tend to not like fractions, that's fine, but let's just be a little bit smarter about what x values we pick. So if I know I'm ultimately gonna divide that number by four, and when I say divide that number, divide that x value by four, or really multiply it by negative three-fourths, pick multiples of four so that everything works out nicely. So I'm gonna pick negative four, zero, and positive four. I wanna just make my life a little easier as I go through this. So if we plug this in, right, we'll have negative three-fourths times negative four. That's going to be positive three. Positive three plus six is nine. Okay, if I plug zero in, negative three-fourths times zero is zero, zero plus six, six. If I plug four in, negative three-fourths times four is negative three, negative three plus six is three. So with that, I can go graph these, these ordered pairs. So let's go to negative four, nine, and then I'm gonna have zero, three, four, five, six, and then I'm gonna have four, three. Okay. And then I can see my line forming, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect the dots here. Okay. And there's the graph of my line. Right? Domain and range, both all real numbers. Now, I've mentioned this before, but it's always worth repeating. If you go to your y equals, let me clear these out, and type in my function negative 3 fourths x plus 6. Oops, I put it into y3. Let me go ahead and just move that into y1. Negative 3 fourths x plus 6. If you go to your table, you're going to see a bunch of table values. And let's take a look. Do we see negative 4, 9? I see 0, 6 and then I see four, three. And your, your calculator actually gives you far more y values than you need, but you can see all of these are little decimals, so they become a little harder to graph. And if I hit zoom six, there's that line. It looks pretty similar to what I've graphed on my paper. I'm feeling pretty good about it. All right, let me scooch this up, and let's just try a different way of graphing the exact same line. So let me get this graph in view now. All right, and like always, whenever you graph something for me, make sure you label your axes, which I wanna see X's and Y's, or whatever letters you're using, um, and then scale them by telling me what each square represents. And I'll let each square represent one unit. All right, so now this says graph this function using the Y-intercept and the slope. So for this function, if we have negative 3 fourths X plus six, this is gonna tell you about the slope and this is gonna help you with your y-intercept, right? So if we're taking a look at this, my slope, actually let's start with my y-intercept. My y-intercept is the point zero, six, and my slope is the fraction negative three over four. Now this slope, to unpack this, we have to think about this as rise over run, okay? 
And you can write this fraction in a couple of different ways. I'll just leave the negative three on the numerator here. And so this is basically telling me to go down three units and then write four units. And let's talk about how we would know the directions. This is always change in y over change in x. Y's will either move you up or down. Those are the only options here. So this would have either been up three units or down three units. I opted for down three units because this was negative. X's are on the denominator of your slope, right? Always change in y over change in x. So this is going to move you left, right. So of your four directions, the numerator is either up or down. The denominator is either left or right. Now, why did I opt to go right four units? Because this is positive. So I'm gonna move positive four units to the right. If you had interpreted this fraction slightly different, if you had said this was three over negative four, which you could, that's an option. These two fractions are equivalent to each other. Then I wouldn't be moving down three units here. This would have been up three units and this would have been left four units. And I'll play both of these scenarios out in just a moment. Sorry, left, right, so that's not, that's not a word. All right, I mean, it's technically a word, but it's incorrect. So left four units. Okay, so your y-intercept, this is always your starting point. And then your slope is gonna tell you how to move. So let's go to our starting point. One, two, three, four, five, six, starting point. Okay, so you can move in one of two ways. Let's try this first one. I'm gonna go down three units, so one, two, three, and then I'm gonna go right four. One, two, three, four. All right, I also could have opted to go up three units, one, two, three, right? Oops, excuse me, that was too many. One, two, three, there's my three units, and then left four units, one, two, three, four. And if I do that, I can, now again, I see my line, I can connect the dots. And really, to graph any line, you only need two points. All right, so through any two points is a line. I usually get three just to make sure I know I'm going in the right direction. And this kind of missed here, so again, just make it a larger dot. No one will ever know. All right, domain and range, all real numbers. When we flip the page, we're gonna talk about yet another way to graph a line. So there's plenty of ways to graph a line. You gotta pick one that works for you. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.